Hello folks, I am The Bitter Clinger, and today I want to talk about the lost art of character development in massively multiplayer role-playing games. I've been hearing a lot of online gamers saying game developers need to put the massively back into the MMORPG. Well, if that's true, then the MMORPG may be in worse shape than I thought, because I'm making this video to say game developers need to put the role-playing back into the MMORPG. Role-playing doesn't mean walking instead of running or having a lore-friendly character name. It certainly can include those things, but role-playing begins with the character. Now, some might say a good story is the most important thing, but a shallow character will kill a good story. This is true for books, movies, and video games. This is why I believe character development is the core attraction of role-playing games. It's also a key factor for player retention. Character development is your in-game content. The difference between wanting to play through a story and wanting to live in a story is character. The Witcher 3 and Skyrim are both AAA single-player role-playing games. And I don't think many would argue that The Witcher 3 has much better storyline and a better game world than Skyrim. But Skyrim has much better character development. And that's probably why Skyrim has such great player retention. Even after completing the main story and all the DLC, players are regularly reinstalling and coming back to Skyrim. Sure, an active modding scene has certainly helped, but many of those are UI improvements and immersion mods. I believe the thing about Skyrim that continues to pull players back to the game is the character development. There are some good reasons that game developers have moved away from certain character development mechanics in MMORPGs, and learning curve is a big one. Most computer RPGs were heavily influenced by pen and paper RPGs, and the most popular pen and paper RPG was Dungeons and Dragons. I used to play it a long time ago, and it wasn't necessarily the best rule set, but playing Dungeons and Dragons was a lot of fun. Because whether you were playing D&D, Top Secret, or even Star Frontiers, the reason you were having fun is the character development. Sure, a bad DM could ruin a play session, but even a mediocre storyline could be very enjoyable because playing your character was enjoyable. Now, the downside to the wonderful character development offered by these various rule sets is that it takes hours to create your character. And doing that character creation in a single player computer RPG could still be a laborious task. Even the watered down version of character creation offered in multiplayer online RPGs could be more than a little intimidating for the uninitiated. Ultima Online and EverQuest both had some form of character attributes such as strength, intelligence, and dexterity, and these often led to some level of confusion with players. Take EverQuest for example. Some players assumed more intelligence would give them more mana. And that's how it worked in some of the other computer RPGs available at the time. Unfortunately, that's not how it worked in EverQuest, depending on what class you selected. And that in turn led to a significant number of complaints on the forums. So, it's no surprise that character attributes had vanished from massively multiplayer gaming by the time games like Dark Age of Camelot and World of Warcraft came around. Now, I'm not saying character attributes are necessary for good character development. Asheron's Call had great character development and that game didn't even have character classes, let alone character attributes. Players selected a number of skills for their character and continued adding skills as they progressed. Skill and talent tree systems can be very rewarding. Even World of Warcraft had what I thought was a good talent system, until they watered it down to just a few mostly inconsequential selections. They did this in part to avoid the problem of learning curve and the potential for ineffective talent selections. And so the great dumbing down of character development in massively multiplayer games has continued unabated to the point where we can't even choose our own weapons anymore. The problem with removing these character-based traits and attributes is they are an integral part of character-based combat systems. In pen and paper RPGs, the player made strategic decisions, chose the type of attack, and selected the targets, but the character did all the fighting. The player's decisions, the character's skills, and a skill check in the form of a dice roll determine the outcome of a fight. 
We can see this type of combat in many single player computer RPGs like Baldur's Gate, Neverwinter Nights, and Dragon Age. Obviously, you cannot have pause and play turn based combat in a multiplayer online game, so developers added the global cooldown. The global cooldown helped to alleviate latency and performance problems on low end systems, but it also served to simulate a turn in combat. We can see scaled down versions of this combat in some MMORPGs. Arcage was the last MMORPG I played that contained some form of character based combat. The player selects the target, the player selects the attack, and the character executes the attack for that turn. The player can't select another attack until the next turn, determined by the global cooldown. If the target moves, the character moves with him. If the character is attacked, a skill check is performed against the character's defensive skills. That's character based combat. Of course, some players didn't like the complex skill trees. Some players didn't like character based combat. So developers solved both of those problems with player based combat, also known as action combat. Where character based combat relies on the character's attributes, action based combat relies upon factors outside the game. The player's hand eye coordination determines whether the character hits a target or dodges an attack. The player's proximity to the game server and GPU performance can affect combat outcomes. Gaming peripherals such as gaming mice and interface mods have much more influence in real time action based combat. So this is where we're at today in the evolution of the MMORPG. We've stripped away many of the more complex aspects of character development and replaced it with player driven combat and boob sliders for character creation. Full disclosure, I prefer character based combat, but I'm not suggesting that it's required for good character development. One of my favorite computer RPGs of all time, The Elder Scrolls V Skyrim, has action based combat, but it also has great character development options and the character progression arc is fun to play through. The trouble is that innovation in the area of character development has stagnated in the MMORPG genre. Developers haven't really added any gameplay mechanics or significant character development options for MMO games until Black Desert Online came along. But don't get me wrong here, I do believe Black Desert Online has some innovative character development features, but they represent only a step in the right direction and not a reinvention of character development in the MMORPG. I don't know much about creating video games, but I'm guessing animation is one of the more time consuming and expensive aspects of the development process. I say that because that's where game studios tend to cut corners. And I believe it has become a limiting factor for character customization in MMO games. I believe this is why we can't have male rangers in Black Desert, or mace wielding berserkers in Terra. The combat is beautiful in these games, but it could also be holding us back in terms of RPG mechanics. I do want to end this segment by saying again, I'm out of my area of expertise on this topic. Maybe animations are cheap and easy and doesn't have anything to do with the limitations I've mentioned. But I thought the topic was compelling enough to include here. A subject where I am on more solid ground is the mythical MMO creature named Balance. It's killing RPG mechanics in MMO games. Pen and paper rule sets are, for the most part, designed for party based co op gameplay. The character classes and skill combinations allow for unique and distinctive character roles and specializations. Unfortunately, when an MMO models its character classes after pen and paper versions, the result is an extreme imbalance between character classes in terms of one on one PvP combat and damage per second in PvE combat. We saw some of this imbalance in EverQuest with the Shadow Knight's Harm Touch and the Paladin's Lay on Hands and the supremacy of naked mages running around on Rallus Zek, the PvP server. Balance complaints certainly aren't limited to EverQuest. Game forums have been filled with them ever since, right up to and including Black Desert Online. So how does this hurt RPG mechanics in MMO games? Well, it's partly the approach that most developers take when it comes to class balance. That is, the nail that sticks up gets hammered. 
So we're going to take any skill that makes a class distinctive, unique, and dangerous and water them down until every class is the same. Sure, the animations might be different and the sequence of button presses might be different, but they all have the same number of crowd control abilities. They all do the same damage per second using the correct rotation. We're to the point now where we don't even have a trinity anymore. Developers have thrown out role specialization and replaced it with different versions of all-purpose characters. I don't believe I'm fighting a lost cause on this issue. It's true that we will always have players complaining about PvP balance and their results on DPS meters, but there is a way forward. The MMORPG market is thriving. The topics we've discussed in this video are a brief chronicle of game developers taking a genre that began on a foundation of pen and paper RPG mechanics, going through a learning curve, and transforming it to what we have today. That doesn't mean there are no lessons left to learn. One problem I see is too many developers are still trying to create the next big one-size-fits-all MMORPG. The good news is I am also seeing developers focus on certain sub-genres in the MMORPG space. Attempts to make the next great PvP-focused MMORPG have been happening since EverQuest introduced the PvP Switch, and there doesn't appear to be any sign of that slowing down with games like Crowfall, Camelot Unchained, and two new Darkfall titles currently in development. Now, gone are the days of ganking unsuspecting noobs. That was a hallmark of Ultima Online, but players know what they're getting into these days. No one is going to play Darkfall Rise of Aegon, then rush to the forums to complain about being killed by another player. Players who aren't interested in PvP aren't going to play those games. On the other side of that coin, we have games like Pantheon Rise of the Fallen, which is targeting the group-based PvE players. I don't know much about this title, but you can bet there will be Pantheon videos on this channel at some point in the future. While these are positive signs, focus on PvE or PvP does not make good character development, but it does make it easier to implement a wider variety of RPG mechanics. PvE-only games make it easier to reintroduce class-defining skills and abilities. Rogues can have their one-shot backstabs, Wizards can have their face-melting spells, and Warriors can have their impenetrable armor. You can also have a wider range of skill choices that allow some players to select more group support skills and sacrifice the ability to solo. Some players may choose more utility skills and sacrifice damage output. The possibilities are almost endless because it doesn't matter if one class is ineffective against another class in a one-on-one -on -one fight when there is no PvP in the game. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is what I believe we'll be seeing in the future of the MMORPG market. I will, on occasion, completely no-life PvP Battlegrounds and Battleground-type PvP games. I think I'm over 16,000 battles in World of Tanks these days. Having said that, PvP is not my area of expertise. I'm happy to play PvP content that is fun and accessible, but I'll leave it to someone else to discuss what could, would, and should be done in PvP-centric MMORPGs. The vast majority of my hours playing an MMORPG are spent on PvE content, and the majority of that is spent leveling characters or working a trade skill or something of that nature. I might do some endgame dungeons, but raiding and that sort of thing just doesn't appeal to me. And that's why I believe character development and progression should be the endgame content in an MMORPG. I love the fact that there's only a soft level cap in Black Desert Online, but even now there are players complaining that the soft cap is imbalanced. The so-called no-lifers are completely overpowered in PvP just by the fact that they're higher level. Look, I'm not suggesting that PvP should be removed from Black Desert. It has always been advertised as a PvP game. But it does present a good example of character development mechanics clashing with PvP gameplay mechanics. Folks, this is not a rant or tirade about the sad state of MMORPGs or about the MMORPG genre being dead. Now, the RPG in MMORPG has certainly been on life support, but I'm actually quite optimistic about the future of the genre. I believe we're going to see more and more games targeting specific types of gameplay in the future. We'll see more games like Camelot Unchained and Pantheon Rise of the Fallen. 
Will those two games be any good? Well, they certainly sound like good games at this point, but who knows what they'll end up being once they're released. I'm certainly going to give Pantheon a try when it's available. And I certainly look forward to what I'm sure will be many more attempts at PvE-only MMORPGs. We even have survival MMORPGs and horror MMORPGs. Now, is a survival MMORPG going to get 15 million subscribers? Of course not. But I don't think that should be the goal. World of Warcraft was a freak of nature that benefited from the right developer creating the right game at the right time. Sure, someone could do that again, but for now, I'd just like to see a game with more RPG mechanics. So, until a developer makes that game, I'll be seeing you in one of those non-RPG MMO brawlers they keep making. <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't resist. This is Bitter Klinger, signing out.